what is up guys today we are just gonna be looking at a loss in a art or a lads match that i just played it's just kind of like a mid low immortal league and this is our first week and this is the first game so we ended up losing this game so we're just gonna take a look i'm gonna run over each lane quickly i'm just gonna be looking at the macro stuff specifically i'm not gonna go super in depth in the lanes here i just didn't get my curse off which kind of sucks well, overall trade ended up going well, but if we got Nikrasov, like, it would have been way better if they'd all been slowed. So I'm going to look at um, each lane quickly, and then we'll go into the mid-game macro stuff. So we got two kills. And the lanes don't go too bad for us. I will start just my lane. I'm at the primal. We're going to the Lesh. Uh, I do not respect the CM here, and I just get solo killed. I really had no idea that, like, he would do this much damage. I think my starting build kind of sucked, given what happened, and I kind of learned from this. Like, this is just too greedy. Uh, if I'm going to play like this, I just need to play closer to the Primal. Like, just 100%, right? This this enables the Primal and us to trade, so me trading with CM on the side doesn't make any sense. If I wanted to do this, I would have just started, like, a bunch of stats and more regen and not this Ring of Basilius, so I get punished for that. I, I don't play particularly well this game, but you know, it's the lane. Uh, this lane still ends up going okay, and the Primal is like ahead of the last 10 minutes, so um, as far as the overall matchup goes, it's fine. I just didn't play it very well. I did get the block off on the pole. I'm just going faster. Got some trades, kill the CM when he walks away. He really can't do that. Get a nice pull off to get the lane back. And at this point, the Lesh has to be super scared. If he walks up, we can just go on them. Uh, what happened here? So I thought the Lesh had to be scared here. Okay, they just like turned with like all their spells, which is like a a ton of damage. Let's just outputs damage. He's a four second cooldown on Lightning Storm, and CM's like spells are really low. So as long as the CM has mana to cast, and the Lesh does, um, they just do a ton of damage. So we didn't. The CM had been gone for a while, which is kind of why we went for that. And then the CM like came back at a really good time and kind of punished us for making that attempt. I still don't have any stats, so I just die really easily. So I think it's just like kind of a mistake of like understanding what's going on. Uh, here the I, I thought it was kind of weird. I didn't think this was that bad because the Lesh just like abandoned the lane, which I guess maybe is not going that well for him, given they've got some kills and like he's still like even in CS with the Primal. And the, their Sven shows up, which we killed the CM, so I'm not too upset about that either. Um, what's Primal got going on? He's got double Bracer and a Raindrop. It's a pretty nice build. Just tank up and basically basically make it impossible for him to die, and they're always a threat. And here we get the Lesh. We actually get him again. Just skip forward to when he respawns. He comes back to this lane, which is psychotic. Um, this guy, he, he can't do this. So basically we just go on him again. I mean, Primal's ult cooldown is like 20 seconds. So uh, we get the CM2. So they're like trying to defend this lane. They're not respecting how strong Primal is. It is timing. So that was this lane pretty much. Um, I did really bad early and then Lesh started feeding, which is why the net worth disparity became super huge all of a sudden. The Lesh just died twice in a row. Um, so let's wind it back, watch top. I don't really know what happened top, um, so we will see. Let's get forward. Okay, the lane is started. So we got Clock and Weaver against Fence Support with LC. Um... Got a stack attempt that happened. Didn't work. The lane's in a good spot though, and the camp is blocked, so um, this is pretty good overall. Nice trade opportunity on the level two. We got a south, so that was pretty nice. Got some mangoes. Weaver's got a stick. It's just chilling. Um. I guess this trading is like okay. Is he gonna pull now? Where are you going? All right, I think this was bad. I think he needed to pull here. Um, just a mistake on the clocks part. Like with the Sven having gone. Is this where Sven had left? Where's the Sven right now? 
Okay, Sven is like roaming mid or some shit. Okay, so Sven's not here. And like this trading stuff is like okay, but like getting back to pull right now when the lane's like clearly shoving in should be like the number one priority. Even though you didn't get the stack off. A half pull, a single pull, any of it would any of it would help. Um, so kind of a mistake to be like roaming mid here. I just don't think this ward like accomplishes a ton. Or you can just do it after the pull. Um, if it's super important to get it down, like you don't even have to like be at the pull, you can just pull and then like go do it. But it's gonna bounce back a little bit. Nice call on the Sven. Connection on the Weaver. Suicide to Tower. It's gonna refill Mid's bottle, which is nice. Help secure the rune. R5 is very uh, intent on securing six minute runes, which is great for him. So that's a very good play, I mean. Uh, going on the Legion here. He's like super tanky. The CM rotates. Um, they actually turn it, which is kind of wild. Um, the, the LC has only one point of Moment of Courage, but he survived a super long time. The Weaver went Urn, which I thought was kind of weird. Like, he said at the very beginning he wanted to go this Urn. I think he just thinks it's a good item on the hero for sustain and stuff. Uh, but given they have an LC in his lane, I'm not, I'm not sure how good it is. And I told him, like, definitely don't upgrade it because they have the Dispel, and he said he wouldn't. I don't know if that's the best item. Like, if he had just had, like, a Wraith Band... Like, Wraith Band is good if this LC ever tries to trade into you. And it just gives you more damage, and otherwise, like, rushing tread. I think the Raindrop and Wand is really good. I just don't know if this is, like, better than a Wraith Band in, like, a game where they have a Dispel. Um, maybe it is. I'm, I'm not trying to flame him. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, kind of a weird ward. I don't think that ward's that important. Well, okay, uh, actually, a ward to scout rotations on the Weaver, if you're ever going to leave, is important. Um, kind of unfortunate, they just have sentries everywhere because it's also a Weaver, so I think it's just kind of a hard ward to place. So maybe it's not a bad ward, maybe they just have, like, three sentries dedicated to this area, and there's nothing you can really do about that. Um, okay, so we're going to deward their ward, because we saw it. Only level 5 on the clockwork, so this is where, like, um, the pull, like, a, uh, like the pull that he could have done would have come in handy, and, like, another couple pulls to, like, just get a little bit more XP. I think it's not supposed to be 6 or anything right now. It's not even doing that bad, considering. Like, I've seen a lot, I've seen worse. But, um, yeah, overall, maybe a pull or two could help with the XP and the lane equilibrium, and that could have been a little more impactful than, um, some of the trading. Not 100% sure. Uh, let's take a look at mid. I mean, I can't really criticize mid, because I don't play this... I don't play mid, but we'll watch. I think our mid did fine too. Actually, I'm not 100% sure. Their invoker got some sun strikes, but otherwise, like, like our mid didn't die. So we got the SF mid. Feels like it's a strong mid laner right now. Revealing strats. Our mid thinks SF's good. a little bit of a hard lane i think for the sf like it's it's like you don't lose it or anything but like you can't put on a ton of pressure because the way sf works right now is you have to get a mid raise to start and you want to like be hitting creeps with it too so if the enemy ranged mid is like decent they just don't get raised they just don't get mid range raised by a creep and then invoker has like high damage with the exorb build so they can kind of out trade the SF. So SF lives a gank here, which is really well played. Um, I think he gets his rune denied uh, by the Forge Spirits, but we do refill him. The Claw came and refilled once, and I also came and refilled once right here. So we got him some refills, which like allows him to like keep playing normally. Like if he wasn't getting any runes and not getting any refills, like his game would have been really hard. But the bottle refills for me, and then again from the clock up here in a little bit, are um, pretty important to just make sure he's like having a game. I don't know if it'd be better here to, like, just shove out the lanes and, like, start going to, like, stack jungle or something. I, I actually don't know. Because, like, I don't think he really has any kill threat on this invoker. Unless the invoker, like, plays like a moron. Here we have the Sven rotation again. That was when the Sven at TB bottom and then he rotated mid. So we probably should have called that out. Um, but he did not buy another ward. Maybe he didn't have one, which is a mistake on somebody's part. Like, the supports. We need... It's really important for the mid to get another ward up around the nighttime where it expires the first time. So it's like a 
it's kind of just fundamental like have a word for mid thing that we and, and then not calling the rotation and make it more obvious that like he could get ganked by the sven who had tp bottom so it's kind of a nice play from them sf his weakness is like getting ganked and dying super easily so you can see he's doing really well in the cs or doing you know in like completely on the invoker but he definitely is ahead of him starting his rotation in jungle now So it did fine. The only thing is maybe he could have rotated jungle a little bit sooner and maybe we could have helped him out a little more with the uh, having a ward available and I don't even know about the Sven. So that was, that's like 10 minutes in every lane. Let's see, we're doing pretty good. Um, we're up 2k, small lead, small lead. Um, so now we'll just watch the macro aspect of the game and just talk about the general like plays that are happening as a team. So here our Primal Beast rotates over to connect. And we start pressuring mid, because uh, the Weaver showed up, so we've got all four of our heroes here. Um, or five, really, Primal's continuing to connect. And this mid pressure is like, it can be really good, as long as you think you're strong enough to do it. So I think we thought we were strong enough with the Weaver being here. Um, we had Clock 6, Primal is like really, really strong right now. It's like one of the Primal's power spikes, basically, is just having his ult up. I mean, you said we killed Lush twice not too long ago. Um, he's just really strong in this phase. I think here we do dive too much. Our Weaver did not get his ulti off there. So, kind of a, just a misplay on our part. Did he have time to? Or... I'm not sure what happened. If he didn't have time, or if he... These replay bugs are the worst. So, he just got Sven stunned. And he's like the only one in here, because our Primal was not in yet. So I think the Weaver just needed to not be in front here, is what happened. So I think this guy overextended a little bit. Um, we just couldn't, like, go for this dive if Primal wasn't, like, in position to, like, go in first. So, really bad death here. Um, like, he didn't, like, way misplay. Like, it was just, like, kind of the wrong order of heroes that went in first. Because otherwise we could have taken that fight fine, I think. Their LC did die, but definitely not worth overall. So the Primal goes back to bottom. The Clock goes top to push it out. I don't really know if I like this move because the Weaver's gonna go top, and is the support is like a, a support clock of this phase. Like you kind of usually are the four, but like even as the five, you kind of just want to be down here, like pressuring, or like bouncing between mid and bottom to like threaten. Like it's not really your job to like sit up here and shove out the lane unless you desperately need XP though, which he doesn't. Like he's already six, so I don't think this like walk to top after this fight was like reasonable from him because when the Weaver is gonna respawn, he's gonna go top. Um, almost certainly. Like, there's nowhere else Re Weaver really wants to go. Like, having a TP to come top to help Weaver if he gets gone on is reasonable, but I don't think walking top is. Um, I had died, I think. I respawned, refilled the bottle mid. And I think I walk top here now because, like, we have these heroes here now. But, like, I don't think this is what we want to be doing at all. Um, like, I think if Clock had been bottom, I would have refilled and walked bottom. Weaver would have been top. And then Clock could have TP'd in to save. Weaver could be playing careful. We could be pressuring this tower harder. Um, that's that's what I think should be happening. So this is all kind of precipitated by like the clock coming up here, it feels like. Uh, oh wait, let's watch this. So I did not finish the rotation at top. What happened here? I refilled my SF's bottle and then hung around for this invoker. And I hit six and got the silence, so we, we kill each other, but, like, that's a pretty big kill for me. Unfortunately, I don't get the XP, um, but that is, like, really good for us. Um, I just don't think he knew I was still in the area. I didn't have a ward, and maybe he just didn't know I would do that much damage. I don't think I knew I'd do, I would do that much damage, honestly. Um, so now Clock's bottom. I'm walking bottom off the respawn. Primal Beast has made his way back over bottom. We were swimming top. This is, like, what we want to be doing. Let's fast forward a bit. And we're shoving it in. Get a ward down. So our Weaver rotated... I don't really know why the Weaver rotated here. Because he wasn't under threat top. Right? Why does he TP? Because we were saying the plan was to like pressure the tower. So I guess he just sees Sven and CM up here and just bails? Yeah, he just sees Sven and CM up here and just bails. I don't really agree with this just because I don't think... Like, these supports are not going to stay up here forever. Like, if their two supports are sitting here alone with no cores, nothing's going to happen for them. So, like, 
either A, they're going to bring cores up here to be with the supports, in which case they're going to pressure, and then Weaver can, like, then look to rotate or just jungle safely. Like, Weaver doesn't love jungling. But you can kind of do it for a little while, right? Uh, with the intent of, like, returning to the lane if they ever leave the lane. Because say this pressure on bottom forces them to TP or prompts them to TP, then it's a free lane for the Weaver if he had just been, like, hanging around doing a camp or two while waiting to see what they're going to do. So him leaving preemptively, I don't really agree with. I think it just, like, kind of hurts his farm. Um, he's already the lowest farmed core, and he's, like, trying to participate. Um, I guess that's the idea with his urn. Maybe it's just how he wants to play the hero. But I just don't think, like, given what's happening on the map right now, that there's, like, an effective use of his time. And they do go on our mid here. Oh, he lives, though, so he's good. He, like, dodged the gank, and we got the tower. So other than the Weaver basically not being top, I think what we're doing is really good. And the Weaver just... If he was top, he would just have to be really careful. Because look what ended up happening is this Sven got this tower alone. And if this Weaver's up here, this doesn't happen. Okay, the tower's already really low, actually. So maybe he can't save the tower. Um, but, like, he could, he could have, like, denied it, and then he can, like... The Sven cannot solo kill him, right? This is a support Sven. So the Weaver could be up here right now, basically free farming. Like, the Sven cannot stop him from free farming. Um, because you just ignore the Sven. So. Let's keep going. We, like, smoked in vision here, but we felt really strong to, like, just go on the Invoker, so we did. We got the global... Um, they couldn't really do anything. We didn't get any follow-up kills, which is unfortunate. Um, our catch isn't that good after Primal's, like, used his, like, ulti. What? What is happening here? Hold on. So we won this fight. It's really important. Like, what you do after you win a fight is, like, really important, actually. So we don't kill anybody else. So the fight's over. Do we get the tower? I think we get the tower, right? We get the tower. So now it's like, what do you do? Primal can keep fighting. That's just how his hero works. Like, he's getting close to BKB, so we don't need to, like, force it super hard. But, like, me, Clock, and the Primal can just walk bottom. Here, I wanted to farm top a little bit because I was really poor. And I wanted to, like, just kind of get some progression towards my next item. I was thinking that, like, Clock and Primal and Weaver could, like, play down here together. I don't need to take top, absolutely. So, like, uh, I think that the Weaver could have gone top. But for some reason, our SF goes top, which I think is bad because, like, he can jungle. Like, of all the heroes on our team, him plus, like, Primal are the ones that jungle the best. And you've got three other heroes. I mean, Clock's not really farming, but, like, the Silencer and the Weaver, if they're going to get gold, kind of need to be in a lane. So I get some stacks for him here. I don't think this is, like, good map distribution. Because, like, you're putting yourself at risk if you're the SF here. Like, if you TP top, now you're just, like, stuck up here. You're susceptible to a gank. The team has to kind of worry about you getting ganked, right? It's like in our head now, like, oh, our SF is like vulnerable. He TP top and he's stuck there. So, not really sure that's a good play. I don't know what our clock's doing here. He's just been like hanging out for like a while. I see he's like trying to look and set up a play. Um, I don't think that was like communicated super well. Um, so I was up here like just pushing it out. I thought I would be fine making space because like the rest of our map orientation was so bad. Like, there's nothing for me to really help. Like, nothing's going on down here. Nothing's going on mid. So I was just taking Dangerous Farm, which I think is okay. Like, this is what I would have been doing anyways. Um, maybe I pushed up a little far, but, like, I didn't mind dying there because literally nothing else was happening. Um, our cores do all connect bottom. But we are, like, now that the clock is, like, back on the map, we are, like, playing, like, the aggressive area of the map, which is, like, this whole portion, which I think is good. Um, like kind of diving the Sven, cover them with the ult, Weaver TP's top, which is like kind of okay. I think we were just looking for a kill here, looking for a gank, we get a smoke. We're feeling pretty strong here, we're just looking for a fight. They like got behind us, and yeah, we played this fight pretty well. Yeah, this is a really good fight for us, we only lose clock. And we make the call for the Roche here, and I think this goes very poorly. Yeah, so we just didn't have the damage for this. Um, our Weaver only has one point in bugs. Also, I believe our Weaver did not come very fast. He, like, TP'd bottom, I think. 
No, that was a different fight. No, he's there right away. He's there right away. I think we just don't have the damage. Um, Primal does not do a lot of damage. I do, like, no damage to Roche. Um, the SF... It's just, it's just not that much, especially with low-level bugs. Um, it's just not it's just not quite enough for, like, a quick Roche. Like, unless they have no idea this is happening, this is, like, not going to work. And Because it's, like, 5v5 competitive, right? It's not a pub. And they had a ward that, like, completely scouted this. They watched us all walk in there. So we kind of just... I think we just slightly misread. Like, I don't... Like, go, going forward, like, obviously, you would, like, learn from the situation. I think we kind of thought we could, and so we did. Obviously, in hindsight, it was bad because we do end up losing this fight really poorly. Um, get caught. Primal doesn't have his BKB. We buy back and commit here, but, like, it goes really bad. Um, and then they finish it with Lesh and Invoker. With an Exhort, Invoker, and a Lesh. Um, these, heroes, these two heroes do do a lot of damage, and the Roshan was already low, so... They played that really well. And we just played a little poorly. We got the Invoker, but... We bought back on, like, Primal and on... Um, Myself, and then I die back, so. Poor call, but it is what it is, right? This game's not unwinnable. I think... I don't know what I was doing here. I think I was just, like... Being really bad. Like, I I need to be pushing this out to, f to push it out, but not to farm it. So it's okay that I'm here pushing it out, right? But I, I need to be, like, back here, like, sapping XP and not being up here, like, hitting the creeps. It's, like, really, really, really bad positioning right here. You cannot walk down here to hit this. It's so bad by me, and I just get punished. So, uh, really trash play for me coming out there. Just not respecting they have a blink pickoff hero that, like, instantly kills me. And let's watch what happens here. So, we choose to defend the tower. I have global up when I respawn, so I think this is okay. They don't have the Aegis any Or, they have the Aegis, but, um, you know, the Lesh doesn't have a BKB or anything. So, we get the Invoker again. Is a pretty good hold here. Weaver's farming top. Got our BKB on SF. Could we have been like more aggressive here after like this fight? Um, again, like just what you do directly after fights like matters so much. It, it actually matters so much. So the Weaver runs top. Bot lane's already pushed in. They're all grouped. We don't have BKBs though. Maybe it's fine that we chill. I think it's fine that we chill actually. Like, you can't like just fight for no reason, right? We kind of scout them in their own jungle. They're like all sitting mid. Looking for a play to be ready to happen. Is Primal's BKB still on cooldown? So he's farming. I think it's fine that we're still just chilling here. I don't remember what we were saying. I think we were just saying we have to give up the tower because we don't have BKB. So I think we were okay with that. The call is just to give up the tower. Which is fine to do if you're not ready to fight them. We've got Weaver BKB now. So the next thing that will be happening is like the next Roche basically. So we're looking to take a fight because we've got all of our BKBs up. So we feel pretty strong. They have this Aegis. It's running out kind of soon. I don't know if we have the timer on that. But I think we we're looking to fight anyways. So we come up here. They leave. Smart of them. And we choose to... So, so this was... We chose to pressure the top tower. Which doesn't... It doesn't matter that much. Other than the... And, and the fact that the... And maybe if we had had the timer on the Roche, this would have been a little different. Because, like, in theory, if Roche was coming up soon, which it's not. But if it was, playing up here and pre pressuring this lane while, like, keeping mid, like, even or shoved is, like, a reasonable play. And it doesn't matter that they're taking this if Roche is coming up soon. Given that it's not, this is, like, really poor... This is just, like, a really poor strategic choice for us because they get to farm the entire map. They're farming, like, our jungle, their jungle, a lane... And we're farming like a little bit of a jungle in like one lane with three cores. Um, so we're just like this farming efficiency for them like favors them a ton right here. This is like kind of bad macro play. Um, our clock I think like kind of knew that but he was the solution is not to like solo go over here. I don't blame him for dying there like we didn't have any vision on them. But I think the play needed to be like earlier to just not do this. 
like once we defend top and they like don't and they like bounce i think like one hero can stay or we just shove it out a little bit and then the rest of us like smoke and like get out on the rest of the map i think that's what's important is to not get stuck up here and just go like look for a play in their triangle and basically just get out back onto this portion of the map given that roshan's not coming up soon right control their jungle control the bottom lane control the mid lane that's what matters um we did have a smoke too so we could have just smoked like right here is five instead of continuing to push the call for this tower was like not good so just kind of poor macro play from us it leads to a pick off from the lc it leads to like them just out farming us for this phase of the game uh or this like you know this like two minute period or whatever um just not ideal right um, so I believe here I get picked off under a ward. Oh no, our primal gets picked off. So we knew that they would like, we knew they were hanging around in this area. And I think that like, I think we're just like not doing anything. I'm not sure for what reason we're not doing anything. We're not like close to an item timing. We have our Scotty on SF and like, I think we had that when they dodged the top fight. We're like not close to any items. So I don't think there's any reason that this Weaver should just be up here jungling. I think we should just be looking for a play. Like somebody can be shoving in mid and then connecting with a TP and the rest of us should be grouped. And then this play doesn't happen for them. I tried to cover it with global, it didn't work. They just do way too much damage. Like I thought I was like, I thought I could like cover the sun strike, right? Um, but that he just died anyways. Cause like this fan ulted, I think, and it is just too much damage. But then they proceed to like, our team is like posted up here and the Lesh like just walks up. Um, so we do kill their Lesh, which is really nice. They kind of like get a pick off and then <laughs> uh, proceed to walk with no vision uphill because they thought they were strong and then they just got like owned. They didn't have LC duel. They didn't have anything, right? Because they had used stuff to go primal. So nice return from us. And then here we we, we do the bait. Um, we, we bait the SF. This wasn't fully <laughs> set up. Like we weren't like, hey, let's bait the SF. We were like, hey... The SF's farming the lane, the Legion might still be down here. We should be really careful. And then he was, but he was by himself this time, and then we, we punished him, but... Um, yeah. Is what it is. So now Roche is up. So that's the only thing that matters. And we should be playing for Roche. I think... Given that Roche is... And I think we just didn't have a timer on this first one, which is just, like, bad, you know, coordinated Dota. It's like... Because they could be Roaching right now. They could 100% just Roche. And I think we just didn't have a timer. Because it's, like, kind of a free tower. They can't fight us here. But they could have just roached and they didn't, so sucks for them, but. Alright, and then we get into a fight up here, and I believe this goes okay. It's like kind of a long drawn out fight. So Weaver gets BKB off, we can't see any animations. Their LC. So they do get into our SF, but he lives because he had his BKB going and he had the life steal. However, they do clean us up here with buybacks. Oh, what happened here is we were like, oh, this went really well. And then we didn't realize they bought back both their supports. Like we just did not register on anybody. Like here we could have just backed and we should have, but we didn't know that they bought back. So we were like, oh, kill them. There's like nobody left. Um, They had already bought back the CM though. The CM was left. Cause we were all still five alive right we were like we just killed like three heroes four heroes um but then they bought back the cm which we didn't know then they bought back the sven and we just got owned um so this is just like after like immediately after this happened we we're like oh they bought back we should have backed um so it's kind of bad awareness from us too hype too caught up in what we were doing but the weaver gets away that gets away so it's like not the end of the world right we're still up um it could have just gone better um, we catch their Lesh, which is super huge. So they've just bought back a bunch of heroes and they fed their Lesh. Oh, he, our SF did die, so we traded. Not super ideal, but not like the worst thing in the world either. Um, get some more kills here. Um, I believe we're calling for Roshan? Should be calling for Roshan? Yeah. Oh, this is the this is where we were TP's bottom, which is really, really bad, I think. I think, because I think we had the opening for Roshan here, especially with max bugs. Um, here, we were strong enough with enough items and SF's respawning really soon to where we should have done the Roche right away and started it right away because this Roche fight ends up being super trash because we thought we had time for SF to TP in, go straight to Roche, 
and we get super punished for it again because we don't start it until way late. Uh, so this was just the huge misplay of the game. Um, the we get the Aegis on the Weaver, but we like lose the whole fight. We die twice. So this this is where we lost the game. Um, the weir that TP on Weaver was really really bad, and given that he did TP. I think we just can't go for the Roche when we did, because they were too close to respawning at that point. Right? We're like... We're just starting it right now. But they're respawning on their supports in like a couple seconds. And they scout it. So we just have to back and like play like the Roche engagement with our BKBs up and hope to win the fight first and then Roche. And we just tried to force it. And we were like too stuck in the mindset of like, oh, we should have been doing it, so let's do it anyways. But it's like, you need to like take a step back and be like, okay, we should have been doing it, but we weren't, so now we can't. And then, like, change how you approach, like, the next play. And we just didn't, and we got punished for it. Um, I mean, we killed Legion, but, you know, it's like a four for six. Or a one for six, I mean, because we all died twice. Or we all died, and then we lost Aegis. So, this is where we lost the game, basically. I mean, you still, we, we're still up in net worth at this point, because uh, we were doing really well. So we're just strategically really, really not great strategic play from us. Um, I didn't, I'm not going too in-depth on, like, what their side's doing, but, um, yeah. At this point, they, I don't know, they kind of scale. The Lesh has some items. Sven's got Boots of Bearing. This LC starts to scale really hard. He's getting a lot of duels. Um, the Invoker's kind of hard to kill with the BKB, and their, like, combo with the, the Cataclysm and the LC duel is really strong. And then, like, this SF hero just dies pretty easily, and this Weaver hero also dies. I think the Weaver with... SF together makes it a little hard to, like, take fights because, like, we have two pretty squishy cores, like, on average, right? Both susceptible to getting dueled and just dying. Oh, you can see the Cataclysm there kind of owns us. None of them even die. So, I'll wrap it up here because this game, this game basically just, like, continues to scale for them. I don't think there's anything too much else to cover, otherwise this is going to be really long anyways. So, um, yeah, that was the game. Went pretty well. We crushed the second game super hard, so we came back fine after this loss. And, um, yeah, maybe you guys learned something helpful for me. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, sub to the channel. And if you want to be coached by me, check the link in the video description. You can join my Discord there, and there's all the information there on how to sign up.